Breaking news here on Texans today. I was just about to put out my final 53-man roster projection video, but we had the breaking news of Christian Kirksey being cut from this Texans team a day before roster cutdown day. The Texans save a little north of $5 million by cutting Kirksey. Um, break some big news here for the Houston Texans. Kind of clears up the linebacking room just a little bit. I'll talk about it more later on in the show. But the breaking news coming out of Houston, Christian Kirksey has been cut from this team. It's almost time, Texans fans. It's almost there. I can smell the regular season wafting in the distance, and it is time for our last 53-man roster projection before cutdown day. Just want to let y'all know, just a reminder, tomorrow is the only cutdown day for the NFL. All teams will have to cut down to 53 men, and that's why you got to Hit that notification bell and make sure your noties are turned to all. How do you do that? You go to the settings app, you scroll down and tap YouTube, tap notifications and turn on allow notifications. And that way, whenever the Texans make their roster moves, whenever there's any breaking news, we've had a couple trades today around the NFL, you'll be notified and you will know what's going on around your Houston Texans. And I want to—I just want to show appreciation to everybody, first of all, who joined us for our live watch party yesterday and for everybody who already has their notifications turned on. So if you are one of those lucky people who have their noties turned on for Texans today, I want to show you some appreciation at the start of today's show. Drop a bell in the comment section so I know who you are. And I want to say thank you to every single one of you who have your notifications turned on. So let's get started with our Texans 53 man roster projection. First up the quarterbacks, uh, no real surprise here. They're keeping three. I got C.J. Stroud, number one. Number two, Davis Mills. Number three, Case Keem. And if you wonder what the numbers are, that's just me counting out each player up to 53. So we can kind of count together and see where it goes. And I encourage all of you at home, if you haven't already, try cutting this roster down to 53 guys. It's not as easy as you think. But the easiest part was... It was the first guy right here, C.J. Stroud, the Texans quarterback one. D'Amico Ryans finally put it out there. He said, hey, this is our guy week one against the Baltimore Ravens, and I am pumped to see C.J. Stroud out there slinging it for H-Town. He's going to have everybody saying, C.J. Stroud, yeah. Bet you that, C.J. Stroud. Put your dollar on that because he is going to lead the Texans to a positive regular season win total this year. Put your money on it. C.J. Stroud, I believe in this young kid. I think you should too. Now, going on to the next position group, the running backs. And I'm really happy with this group right here. Damian Pierce, Devin Singletary, and Mike Boone all looked really good in that last preseason game against the New Orleans Saints. And Damian Pierce, he only played the first two drives. He was running angry. He was running like a man on a mission. I am so pumped to see what Damian Pierce can do this season. And I think this is going to help out C.J. Stroud tremendously having a backfield with Damian Pierce, Singletary, Boone, three guys who really know what they're doing, three guys who can carry the rock. And I personally think underrated, this is one of the best running back groups in the NFL right now. When you look at Damian Pierce, Devin Singletary, he's an underrated back. I think this is one of the best running back groups in the entire NFL. But I want to hear from you folks at home. What do you think? Grade the Texans' backfield for this season. Give me an A, B, C, D, or F in the comment section. This is going to be the pinned comment on today's video. So if an ad break comes on YouTube, don't worry. It's perfect timing. Scroll on down. It's going to be the very first question on there. Grade the Texans' backfield this year. A, B, C, D, or F. Going on to our next position group, it's the wide receivers. Nico Collins, Robert Woods, Tank Dell, John Mechie, Xavier Hutchinson, Noah Brown. No surprise there, but I moved them up there on, the, on my list. It's Tank Dell because he is lightning in a bottle. He was electric. I mean, 
an amazing catch against the Patriots in the very first preseason game, an acrobatic touchdown. And then last night didn't get a ton of run at receiver, but still making an impact in the return game. The punt return against the Saints that set up the very first touchdown was by Tank Dell. He went right, faked everybody out, then went left, down the sideline, and then just a shot out of a cannon. He looks amazing. He's so quick twitch and able to, you know, stop on a dime. I think in open space, in o like if Bobby Sloak is able to get this guy with the ball in his hand in the open field, he is going to make a lot of highlight plays this season for our Houston Texans. Next up is the tight end room. Dalton Schultz, Tegan Quatoriano, and maybe, uh, maybe an unpopular opinion here. I think they might be going with Eric Tomlinson as the third tight end. Um, they might very well go with Brevin Jordan, but I think they're looking for a blocking tight end with that third guy. And Tomlinson has been getting a ton of reps in training camp in the preseason. We haven't even seen Brevin Jordan. He hasn't even played. He's been hurt the whole time. Uh, might be an IR stash if Brevin Jordan's not ready to go. Or they just might uh, go out right out and cut him. But these are the three guys whenever I was looking through the roster. I was between Eric Tomlinson and Dalton Keene. Because Dalton Keene got some work at fullback yesterday as well. Another note, maybe Andrew Beck is off the team. I don't know. But these are my three guys. I don't know if they keep Brevin Jordan going into this season. And the Texans offensive line room. A lot of movement around the offensive line this offseason. Uh, I mean, first and foremost, you look at this list. Laramie Tunsil, Michael Dieter, Juice Scruggs, Shaq Mason, Titus Howard. That might be your starting unit for week one. Kenyon Green, Still, still going to be on the team. Jarrett Patterson, the rookie, he's going to be your backup center. And then your two tackles, George Fant and Josh Jones coming off the bench. But I, I'd i be lying to you if I didn't say if I was a little bit worried about Kenyon Green. What, did not run with the twos yesterday. He seems to be behind in this offense, not really picking it up, not being able to you know take that next step into his sophomore season. And then he put, he's running with the twos yesterday yesterday against the Saints, and then gets absolutely embarrassed by Brian Brissy on a one-on-one -on -one pass blocking situation, and then comes up hurt after the play. I mean, Kenyon Green, your, your first round pick from last season. I'm a little worried about him. I mean, I think he's still going to make the roster. I think it's way too early to give up on him, but if he doesn't play good this year, if he's not ready to play this year, he might be cut from this team. He might be done with the Houston Texans. What do you think? I put this as a community poll on our Texans channel. Are you worried about Kenyon Green? Yes or no? I mean, it's it's a valid question. Kenyon Green, sophomore season, you should be looking to get better. You're a pick in the first round offensive lineman. We've seen it before. The Raiders cut Alex Leatherwood. If you're not good, if you can't cut it, teams are not going to keep you. I mean, the Browns just cut Cade York. And he was a third-round pick. If you're not going to cut it for an NFL team, you're going to get cut. Kenyon Green, I'm pretty worried about this young kid right here. And the Texans do cut Kenyon Green if they move on from him. Any moves that are made with this roster, like I said at the top of the show, make sure you have your notifications turned on. Go down there, hit the bell, ding, and make sure you're locked and loaded for all the Texans news and rumors coming up this season. That was the offense now let's swing on over to the defensive side of the football. I have the Texans keeping five defensive tackles. And before I only had them keeping four, what really changed my mind was the play by Kurt Hennish. He looked really good during training camp, during the preseason. I think they keep five going into the year. Your starters are going to be Malik Collins, Sheldon Rankins. Also, I believe the Texans keep Roy Lopez. D'Amico Rines loves him Hassan, some Hassan Ridgeway. He said it coming into training camp. I love having veterans like Jimmy Ward, Denzel Perryman, Hassan Ridgeway, one of the guys he named. I don't think he's going to let go of him. And I think they're also going to keep Kurt Hennish as well on the defensive tackle spot. For the other part of the D-line, the defensive ends, I think they also keep five. Obviously, you're going to keep Will Anderson. Jonathan Grenard has a spot. Jerry Hughes has a spot. Jacob Martin, watch out for this kid. I think he's going to have a roster spot as well. And then the rookie out of TCU, Dylan Horton, I think he's proved enough to stay on this Texans roster and be a part of the 53-man. 
Um, these are the five guys I think are going to be rotating at defensive end. Even though a little weird yesterday, Jerry Hughes was playing deep into the second quarter of the last preseason game when all the other starters were out. Um, I'm not. I'm trying not to read too much into that, but I did think it was a little weird that Jerry Hughes was still in the game. A, an older veteran at that, not even just like a four or five year veteran. He's been in the league for a while. To be playing that late in a preseason game, maybe he just wanted to get some more reps. Maybe he needed some more tune up. But uh, a little weird that he was playing that deep into the preseason game, if you ask me. Next up, let's look at the linebacking unit for the Houston Texans. I mentioned at the very beginning of the show, Texans cut Christian Kirksey today. I, uh, I'm not going to say I called it, but I called it. Uh, I had Christian Harris, Denzel Perryman, Henry Toto as my three must-have locks. And then the other two guys, I went ahead and went with Blake Cashman and Jake Hansen. Jake Hansen really impressed me a lot this preseason and training camp. I think he played well during the preseason games. I was between him and Garrett Wallow like really heavily for that last spot, but I ended up giving the nod to Hanson. These are the five guys I'm going to keep on this Texans roster. I mean, I think we had the depth charts throughout the preseason. It was Christian Harris, Denzel Perryman in the middle, and then Blake Cashman. I think that's going to be the starting unit Week one against the Baltimore Ravens, Henry Toto, he's going to come in and he's going to be like, you know, the guy who gives you a breather. He's going to get some reps here and there and then get a ton of work in the special teams. I really liked what I saw out of the young kid from Alabama. And Jake Hansen, another guy who's going to get a lot of work in special teams. But I think, you know, if there are injuries, if there's anything that happens to this linebacking unit, I feel comfortable with Jake Hansen coming in and being able to step in for this unit and get some good reps in. Um, Denzel Perryman, a free agent signing from this offseason, he might have been the biggest low-key signing behind Jimmy Ward that the Texans made this offseason. Denzel Perryman, he had an amazing pick to start off the Texans-Dolphins preseason game. And then every time I watch him on the field, he always finds his way to have his head around the football. He's always right there around the tackle, around the action. I mean, in that uh, wide receiver screen, I believe it was in the first quarter, went around the side, did the Saints wide receiver. Who's there making the tackle but middle linebacker Denzel Perryman, uh, Christian Harris, second-year player out of Alabama. I'm really looking for him to improve this year and show that he – is going to be that next guy up, that next person to wear the green dot for the Texans. I think he's going to be your future captain here at the linebacker spot. I have high hopes for Christian Harris. But like I said earlier, that last spot for Jake Hansen, I was down to these guys. Jake Hansen, Garrett Wallow, Corey Littleton, or Neville Hewitt. Who would you keep with that final linebacking spot? If you think it's Jake Hansen, type J-H. Garrett Wallow, type G-W. Do you think it's Corey Littleton, type C-L, or... If you think it's Neville Hewitt, type NH. Now going to the corner room. Derek Stingley Jr., Steven Nelson, Desmond King. Not much change there, but these two guys right here. I had to add it to him. Cameron Dantzler, he got an interception to end the game. Is it enough for him to make the roster? I put him on there, and I'll tell you why. I think Kadar Holman as well, because not only was he working his tail off yesterday. Yes, he had the touchdown catch on him from Jimmy Graham, but... He was around the football a lot, and I think this is one of your special team's aces going into the season is Kadar Holman. You got to look at that kind of with the bottom end of wide receiver, you know, even running back corner. Those rooms, the last guy, they're going to have to contribute on special teams, and Kadar Holman is a very good special teams player, in my opinion. That's why I gave the nod to him, and I gave the nod to Cameron Dansel right here because, honestly... I really did not trust Shaq Griffin in his run in his run stopping ability at the corner position. I saw him multiple times this preseason get burned on outside runs to his side and wide receiver screens to his side. His tackling is just not up to par and he might have lost himself a roster spot. It, I was between Shaq Griffin and Cameron Dantzler. I ended up going with Dantzler. It could go Griffin either way, but for me personally, I would go with Dantzler because he's better, he's decent in coverage, and he's a lot better run stopper, in my opinion, than Shaq Griffin has been this training camp. And lastly, 
the safety spot. Jimmy Ward, Jalen Petrie, nothing new there. Graylon Arnold looked really good yesterday. I'm putting him on my 53-man roster. Another guy who I think is going to be a contributor on special teams. And then Eric Murray and MJ Stewart. I think they keep five safeties as well. Um, these guys kind of also playing in the nickel a little bit. You can see Eric Murray get in there. MJ Stewart in nickel and dime packages find their way on the field. Graylon Arnold was around the ball multiple times. Got a pick yesterday. Should have had two. But around the ball a lot. I think they keep these five guys at the safety position. And then special teams. Kaimi Fairbairn, Cameron Johnston, and our sweet prince. Long snapper John Weeks. Cameron Johnson, he's hurt right now. He uh, had a tweaked hammy, but he should be ready to go week one. Um, we'll see what happens with that situation, but everything I'm hearing, I think he should be ready to go for week one, so I'm slotting in Cameron Johnston as the punter on the 53-man roster. That's all for today's show. That's my 53-man roster projection. Reminder, I'll be putting out videos tomorrow on actual NFL cut day, the only cut day of this offseason. So the Texans will have to get down to 53 men. There's going to be a ton of moves tomorrow, so don't miss out. Turn on your notifications and make sure you're, you're, uh, you're subscribed to the best Texans channel here on YouTube. We're giving you Texans news, rumors, updates, more live shows and watch parties throughout the whole season. Texans fans, stay tuned in.